Você quer ser que sou agressivo? Ou deixa sua bunda dentro? Ou dá tapa, 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 Você quer ser que sou agressivo? Ou deixa sua bunda dentro? Ou dá tapa, 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 In my last video I built this 72 volt electric motorcycle out of a Win1 E2 e-bike and it was epic, but people pointed out some inconsistencies with my experiment which made this bike very dangerous to ride. A few examples would include the lack of torque arm securing in the rear motor, the brakes I was using, and some commenters pointed out how poorly the battery was mounted. And honestly, I could just say, freaking haters. But that's just not what we do here. On top of fixing these issues, I also added new suspension to this bike and gave it an entirely new look, and you're going to want to see exactly how I did all of this. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead, hit that like button, leave a nice comment down below, and most importantly subscribe so you can help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers. I know it's a very small action, but for me it means a lot, and without further ado, let's get right into it. You should clean up that wiring a little bit. Nice build though. I first began by taking out the very heavy battery as well as removing the seat so that I can more easily maneuver and work on this bike. I then proceeded to remove the old battery slot as well as any extra wires that don't go to the electronics that I currently have on this bike. Everything about cutting off all these old wires which you're not using anymore just feels so wrong to me. I totally should like, replace the suspension or something. While I was busy childproofing this bike, I figured we might as well replace the front and rear suspension with something better. Luckily for me, I had these zoom forks laying around the house as well as some rear DNM burner suspension. This is not the greatest suspension in the world, but it's certainly better than what we already had on this bike. We also went ahead and replaced the front wheel, and then of course after that we installed our rear DNM burner shock. After adding our new suspension, I realized that there was some more wires that we needed to clean up. I see an issue with the battery strap distorting the battery. This could damage cells and cause thermal overload. Fine buddy, I'll fix it. Alright, so I didn't have the resources to build a full battery box just yet, but to give the battery just a little bit more protection from the elements, I went ahead and wrapped it in some waterproof vinyl to make sure that this battery was just a little bit more protected from the elements. I also went ahead and sealed it in with some duct tape, but unfortunately I didn't film that, so you're going to see that later in this video. Before I added protective foam, I made sure that the battery cavity was nice and clean, and then I went ahead and taped in some foam to make sure that the battery was just not sitting on bare metal. I then glued foam on the inside of our ratchet strap to make sure that I was putting less pressure on the battery. So after all that prep, it was finally time to get our battery in and ratchet strap it down. I wanted to make sure that people understand that I did not absolutely crush this battery with a ratchet strap. I made sure that it was tight enough so the battery wouldn't move, but not too tight to where you can crush the battery, because you can crush a battery with a ratchet strap, believe me. Finally, I added in our foam block to keep this battery nice and secure. Still being a little worried about my battery, I went ahead and switched up the ratchet strap so it puts less stress on the battery. 6 kilowatt motor with no torque arms on the dropout, 8 washers per side, 2 nuts for the brake spacers. Definition of sketch. First off, we're going to ignore the washer thing, we're going to ignore the brake spacer thing because it actually holds up just fine, but you're right about the torque arm thing. We do need torque arms, so we're going to be adding those. I first used the torque arms that I'm going to use to pinpoint where we're going to drill this hole, and after that I add a drill bit to my drill and get to work. All right, so check this out. We got our first hole for our torque arm. This is going to go on the inside, just like this. And that's gonna make sure this motor doesn't fall out. Time to drill torque arm hole number two. 
After we finished drilling our holes, I lifted the bike off of our motor and rearranged the spacer so that we can get those torque arms in. The reason I put them on the inside and not the outside like most people do is because there really just isn't enough space on the outside to get both the torque arm and that final nut screwed back on. All right, there we go. We got some torque arms. You happy? After getting in our new torque arms, which by the way was a super smooth operation, I went ahead and tightened everything down. Now, I wasn't really concerned about it going anywhere in the first place, but now it's definitely not going anywhere. Bro, you need better brakes. Of course I needed better brakes, that's why I replaced the old stock Chinese brakes which didn't really give me much stopping power with these brand new Shimano SLX 120s. These brakes have 4 pistons and should perform a lot better than the original brakes. I would like to upgrade to some beefier brakes in the future, but for now these should hold us over. And then we move to the rear, making sure that everything works smoothly. Richard says, okay, you tested it. Now go back and actually make it right. Now go get a license as anything over 750 watts needs to be licensed in every state unless you keep it off road, which you're obviously not by your video. Well, I actually have the perfect response to this. And finally, with all that, we were ready to get this thing on the road. I went ahead, put that seat back on, cleaned it up and made sure that everything was nice and tight. And just a quick summary to go over everything that we did to this bike to make it better in this video. Of course, the big thing for me was we added new front and rear suspension to give this bike a much cleaner ride. We improved on our battery housing design. We added new and improved four piston brakes. And most importantly of all, we added our torque arms. And finally, after all of this, we were ready to get our bike on the road and test it out. Ooh. I don't know, man. After all these upgrades, this bike feels so much better. I mean, for example, just like the smoothness of that front wheel makes so much less noise because it's more of a road tire as opposed to that fat tire, which has all those like bumps and shit. The, the height of the bike is different. Like the, I like these front forks a lot more. They're pretty nice. Even though they're just zoom forks, which is like the, the ultimate budget fork, um, they're definitely better than what was on this bike before. They put it a little bit higher up. Rear suspension, uh, DNM burner, uh, liking it a lot and of course we got the torque arms really making sure that this swing arm is nice and secure so uh, I'm liking this bike how it is right now um, it's not perfect still looking to add a battery box um, but I think this should be better than what we had before and uh, as you can see it's not overly tight so we're not like cramp we're not like pressing down on the battery absolutely crushing it we're just we have it tight enough to keep it in there um, so yeah, I mean, right now this thing is pretty fun. It's good. One thing that terrifies me is running into one of those like wires that people put up on their property to like shut out bikers because you don't always see them or realize that you're going on private property. Those are scary, right? Because you're riding, you don't expect it, and then suddenly, boom, your freaking front of your bike is gone. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up, leave a nice comment down below, and most importantly, subscribe. It's a very small action, you're just pressing a button, but believe me, it takes a long time to make these videos and it means the world to me. So make sure to go ahead and do that if you haven't already, and I will see you guys very soon in the next one. Later.